Hello, here's the D-Bot T8, the latest and greatest robot vacuum for 2020 from Ecovax. Is this the robot vacuum for you? Well, stay tuned to find out. Whoa, what is this guys? Is this what I think it is? The Ecovax Osmo D-Bot T8. Yes, that's a handful. So I'm just going to call it the T8 for now. So the D-Bot T8 is newest robot vacuum from Ecovax. It actually came out with two of them. There's the T8 and the T5, but this is the newest one. So what's special about the T8 is like on the 960, it has the AIBI technology, so it can recognize objects. So this is one of the first robot vacuums with the front-facing camera and also a LiDAR navigation system. So this is a really high-tech robot vacuum for a decent price. I believe this guy was $7.99, but keep in mind prices fluctuate up and down like this. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to do an unboxing. I'll also get up the 950 and show you the physical comparison of the two. They actually look really, really similar if you watched my last video down in the description below. And lastly, we'll do a uh, cleanup challenge and some navigation test. So let's get started, guys. Um, look at down here. This is called the optional. Um, I just found this out two seconds ago. It says the Osmo Pro has electronically controlled bobby pad, but it also vibrates. Wow, up to 480 times per second. So I hope that I can add the attachment later to the T8. And it also has the self emptying bin. What? Self emptying bin, guys? Yes, this will be the ultimate robot. Being able to have that self emptying bin with the front facing camera, LiDAR system. Oh my gosh. Okay, d -Bot. I need that self emptying bin right, right now. I'm just kidding. More information, you guys can just look at it. But basically, it can mark what objects have been found on the map. Very nice. Also has what the 950 has, that 3 hours of battery life, and the 24 CFM. Very, very nice. A very clean looking box. Alright, let's go ahead and get this guy open. Uh, there's like a little tab up here. Just kind of grab that and peel. Makes opening very easy. No longer do I have to get a fancy cutting tool, or a chainsaw, or something else. One, two, three. Wow, this looks really cool. All right, so here's the T8, very clean. Let's get that plastic out of there. Very satisfying sound. Got the mopping attachment as well. So these things actually prevent the bumper from moving during shipment, these like little foam inserts. Just pull those out. And that's it. We're all done. No switch. The Wi-Fi in here, the reset button is all in the same location of the 950. Here's underneath the robot. Very nice. Basically the same design as the 950. We have our washboard mopping attachment. Very nice. I like that EagleBox does good job packaging. You could probably drop this 100 feet and it still won't break. So as always, I get a free hat. It's really cool. People at work love me. Alright, so like the Roombas, it comes with these separate containers. So up top here, we have some accessories. We got our side brushes here. And we also have our charging base down here. And looks like we got some additional boxes. So let's just go ahead and open up the boxes. Start from the top here. Start from right here, since it's the easiest I can grab. Uh, I don't know which my left and right is. Let's go ahead and install the side brushes. They're easy and they're color-coded. They should just snap right in without any tools. Easy peasy. The largest box that will stay up top. Like we got an instruction manual. Very nice. So this looks like the lens cover, so if you're worried about privacy, you actually can put this over the camera lens and no one can see what you're doing. Very nice, handy feature. Just sticks on there and then when you're ready, just take it off and you're good to go. Here's the warranty card, very nice. And our lovely FCC. Has a lot of information and tells you how to set up everything and what all the accessories do. Make sure you guys read that, it's very important. Alright, so here's some more accessories. Looks like we have like 10 disposable mopping pads, very nice. A box. Charger. An extra filter. 
Very nice looking feel to it. And it looks like we have two additional side brushes. So here's the charger. Very nice. I like the sleek look of the charger. Definitely looks smaller than like the Roblox charger. And like the Roblox, you can actually wrap the power cable around. And this guy does support 100 to 240 volts. So you can work this overseas as well. Okay, so let's look at the design changes between the 950 and the T8. One thing you may notice in the front there is that AIVI camera. That's the only noticeable difference between the two. The D-Bot T8 has a new camera system that can detect and recognize objects 200 times quicker than the previous model, the 960. With the new DTOF sensor, which is a time of flight sensor, it's able to detect objects two times farther away. And lastly, the T8 has four times the improved map accuracy. So with all that said, I have found that the T8 does do a better job recognizing objects over the 960, which I tested on this channel. So on the T8, this looks more of like a kind of a brush silver aluminum type black, where this is more of a darker plastic looking black. Let's see if I can get the T8 booted up here. If you press it once, it pauses. Thanks for the interruption, T8. Okay, so with the power buttons, I like the fact that they light up in like a kind of a cool white color. Also, kind of like the 950, you can press it once to pause or resume the job and hold it down for 3 seconds to return back to the docking station. Alright, let's have a quick look underneath the flappy lids. Uh, this is the T8, the 950. And notice that the design is the exact same. You got your cleaning brush with the cutter head right here. Great for removing pet hair. Also, the little bristle brush. I like this little brush and it stores neatly in the robot. Very nice, clever design. And here's the dustbin. I believe these are 480 milliliters, and I believe they're also swappable. Let's go ahead and check that out. Yep, they're interchangeable, and also the filters are interchangeable as well. Very nice. So you got this physical power switch. Great if you're going on long trips, just turn the robot off, and it won't drain its battery. Also, you have a Wi-Fi indicator right here, and you have a reset button for your Wi-Fi, and here's the QR code. And then up top is a LiDAR sensor with the Domi thing. Alright, so down in there you have a micro USB cable port and you also have a proprietary port as well for updating the software and doing anything else that EcoVax needs to do with their robot. Very cool. So, like on the 950, the side of the robot is the exact same. One thing I do wish it had was a dedicated wall sensor. Wow, can you tell the difference between the 950 and the T8? I can't. So let me give you a hint. The T8's over here and the 950's over here. But they're the exact same underneath. So there's actually a couple key differences. Alright, let's go ahead and start from the top here. You got a front wheel caster. You also have our dual charging contacts. We got six clip sensors, three on each side of the robot. We also have our dual side brushes. I like the dual side brush design and they don't spin too fast so they don't scatter debris around as much as on some blow up back. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Christina can be. Okay, so we've got that extractor bar. Let's go ahead and uh, get that guy opened. The extractor bar on both is the exact same and they're probably interchangeable. Let's see. Yep, they're interchangeable. They're the extractor bars and the two covers. So one thing to note is I have been running the 950 throughout my house twice a week and notice that there's not much hair. I usually don't clean my robot vacuums just for testing. So if I give the robot brand new filters, extractor bars every time I test it, it probably won't represent the real world results because not everyone's going to have new filters and extractor bars when they run their robots. So I try to just wear them down and see how well they hold up. So this is the original extractor bar for the 950. This like black panel window. I believe this is an additional sensor. You know that there's like a kind of a gap here between where the extractor bar is and the mopping pad. So with this extended gap here, check a look at the size of the mopping pad. So the 950 actually has a slightly larger mopping pad over the T8. Go ahead and get these guys removed. Alright, so here's the look at the robot without the mopping pad installed. Here's the water tank reservoir. 950, the T8, they look like the exact same size. Let's see if I can interchange it. Yep, 
So, once you have the mopping pad attached, you just kind of press down. Mopping and it, plate has been installed. And the robot will definitely let you know it's been installed. Thank you, 950. And the TA probably does too. I just have it off right now. Alright, so I got my smartphone. I've been using Galaxy Note 9. You're also going to use an iPhone. I also have an iPhone 8 I use for my testing purposes. And both the Ecovax Home app have been running really well on both platforms. Hey guys, how's it going? So I got the TA all paired up to my smartphone. I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of the app. It's just the same app as the Nosmo 950, the Ecovax Home app. But the menu is a little bit different. Alright, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Since I own both robots, the 950 and TA, there will be two robots that will display on the home screen. Now, with the 950, if I clicked on the robot, it will actually go to the actual menu. But for the T8, I can't physically select on the robot icon. I actually have two sub-menus, the smart cleaning and also the video butler. I'll show you that video butler shortly. Okay, let's jump into the smart cleaning. So I haven't created a map yet, but I'll definitely show you how that works as well. So what you can do is, when you first get the robot, make sure you enable the multi-floor mapping if you have a multi-level house. That's very important, or the robot won't save the three or so floor plans that the robot can do. Now another thing you have to do is jump into the menu, it's in the top right hand corner. And you notice there's a bunch of settings. A lot of these settings are turned off, so I recommend turning them all on and then figuring out which ones you don't want. Uh, one thing I do turn on is the advanced mapping mode. This allows you to edit the map, uh, you can name the map, create areas, virtual boundaries. I'm kind of scratching my head here. Why in the world did Ecobacks turn that off by default? But it is turned off. So another thing you could do is turn on the AVI smart recognition. Okay, so the AIBI technology will allow the camera to recognize objects and avoid it like socks and shoes. Also it can put a little pin on the map that you know where those objects are within the floor plan. Okay, so these are just the normal uh, settings. You can change the power levels. This thing can go up to 24 CFM and run at 200 minutes over 3 hours. Quite impressive battery life. You also have 4 different water levels. And you have the auto boost section which is great for carpet. So once the robot detects carpet, it goes on its max suction mode. And you got the cleaning schedule. So like with any smart robot vacuum, you can create a scheduling. And you can also schedule the robot to go to different areas within the floor plan. So let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just have it do the kitchen. And then every other day, maybe do the entire house. But you can do whatever you like with that scheduling app. Alright, so you got do not disturb. So you can set a time when the robot doesn't have its volume turned up. And also won't go out to clean. You can also reset the current map. And this is something I haven't seen is the cleaning cloth reminder. So with the cloth reminder, if I click on it, I can set the time from 15 to 60 minutes. So it just lets me know, hey, I should probably change out the cloth when it's mopping. Just for sanitation reasons. Okay, so this T8 also has some extra features. You can do a clean log, you have accessory port, which is found on the 950 as well. Kind of tells you when to reset everything. And you can name the robot and all the fun jazz. Okay, that was just a quick overview of the app. I'm going to start the mapping process and give you guys a quick look on how that works. Okay, before you start, make sure that the map saving mode is enabled and just press the clean button. The robot will start doing a perimeter sweep and then film that perimeter sweep with the back and forth cleaning powder. So to ensure that the robot does the entire house, I will take off the auto carpet boost mode and also put it on its lowest setting so it has the best possible battery life. Did you hear a difference between the max plus mode versus low power mode? Yes, even at its max plus mode, it runs around 58 decibels, so it's quite a quiet robot and on its low power mode you can run this at night without disturbing people. There's a lot of benefits to a LiDAR system. It can run in absolute darkness. Also can create a floor plan within one cleaning run where some robot vacuums take anywhere from 3 to 30 cleaning runs. One thing that LiDAR sensors have is the ability to create the map in real time. So if an object changes in the floor plan, it will update that in the map. The T8 navigates very similar to the Roblox where it divides the room in sections and fills that perimeter sweep 
with a back and forth cleaning pattern, and then it continues on with another section of the house. Whenever I create a map with a robot vacuum, I try to pick up everything because they have the best chance of completing the map without any interruptions. So I pick up shoes, cables, any loose clothing. Also, if there's lightweight chairs, I try to pick those up as well. And with most robot vacuums, they need to start from the charger and end the cleaning job from the charger. So try not to pick them up or pause the robot while it's trying to map your floor plan. So even robot vacuums get into fights, you can see that the DJ is trying to prevent the T8 from going around its base, but it wins and now it's confused and can't get back to its charging base. But thankfully I was there, I was able to assist the DJ. Okay, so it looks like the T8's done with the entire main level. We'll see how much dirt and debris the robot picked up. Now, look at the robot vacuum. You may notice some dirt and debris in extractor housing. That's probably because as the dirt bin was getting filled, it restricted the airflow, and especially on low power, it wasn't able to draw the larger dirt and debris like Skittles and other candies. But for the most part, on low power, it did really good picking up a lot of the dirt and debris. Okay, so the next test we're going to do is the navigation test. This is one of my favorite tests. We see how well the robot can navigate various objects. Now one feature that the TA has is video butler mode, which allows a live video feed from the front facing camera of the robot. With this mode, there's a microphone where you can record your voice. Also, you can take pictures from what the robot sees. So there's the map of my floor plan. We'll click on a pin and the robot will automatically drive to that spot. So there's only a couple of robot vacuums that have this capability, being able to view the live camera feed of the camera. Now, unfortunately, like the iRobot, even though it has a camera, you can't view the live feed. But like the LG Cord Zero R9, it's one of the robot vacuums where you can, and it does have the ability to go to a waypoint. But I have found that the T8 does a better job navigating around obstacles and not getting confused. So I did compare this to the Roblox, and I will do a video of a head-to-head -head comparison of the T8 versus the Roblox. But I did notice that the Roblox does have a little bit better navigation abilities. But hopefully, Ecovax updates its robot and improves the navigation. You can see that the LiDAR sensor doesn't pick up those chip bags, and also it tries to run into Sparkles. Yes, you guys remember Sparkles, the magical unicorn? Yeah, poor Sparkles. Anyways, the robot vacuum does shut off the AIVI camera system, so it doesn't recognize objects when it's in this mode. So that's something that's kind of odd, but hopefully Ecovax can update the software where it can enable the AIVI camera to get to certain locations. So for now, the AI VI system is only used when the robot's actually cleaning, not when it's in its live video feed mode. The last test we're going to do is just see how well the robot can avoid obstacles in its AI VI mode. You have the ability to shut that off, but it looks like the robot does fairly well just avoiding these objects, shoes, cables, socks. Also, it can pick up fairly large debris like almonds, skittles, and some smaller debris like lightweight beads. I did note that the airflow kind of shoots upwards so it doesn't scatter the debris around and also the dual sidebar system does a good job not scattering the debris so it looks like the TH done. Okay so it looks like I'm going to wrap up this video. Sorry if it was quite long but I wanted to cover a lot of details about the new DBOT T8 and the DBOT for the most part is doing really well. Now keep in mind that this product just came out like a week ago so there is some minor quirks and bugs in the application but I'm hoping Ecovax is proactive and updates the software so have a great rest of your day and for now it's a good thumbs up for me.